Welcome back to the Stuff International News Stage 2016 here at CES. There are drones galore at CES this year, as there were last year. But this year, you literally can't move for the amount of drones there are. There are over 100 drones just in the central hall alone. And I find myself ducking to try and avoid them. Vernon seems to have a drone here on his hands, which is a bit different from all the other copycats. Vernon, what have you got there? Um, so this is Micro Drone uh, 3.0. This is a third generation drone. Um, we've been making micro drones since uh, 2011, and our aim is to really be a kind of small size personal drone which anyone can fly. They can pick it up, and whether they're a first time pilot or an expert pilot, you know, it's a drone for everyone. It really does look incredibly small and lightweight. How, um, how light is it? Um, so the drone on its own is 55 grams. Um, we wanted to make it really lightweight so that we could pack technology into it, but also make it um, have longer flight time, but also make it a small size device. And it's just incredibly portable, often with drones. I've got a couple of drones, and you know, you're looking at big suitcases or backpacks. This one, you literally can literally just put it on the car seat, take it out with you, and just go fly, right? Yeah, that's right. So until now, drones have, um, small size drones have really been more like toys until now. Um, you get these little things which can fly up and down, and, and that's about all they can do. Um, but the only drones which are really useful are the big size ones, which cost over a thousand pounds and um, require a lot of experience, and you know, not for everybody. But um, what our aim for Microdon was to really make a small size but cram lots of great technology into it. So it's useful um, with a 720p HD camera to make good quality videos and photos and um, dual control for different varying abilities. OK, so let's uh, go through some of these features here. Uh, you talked about the camera. Now, the camera is built in or is it modular? Because the whole approach that you've taken is a very modular approach to drone building, That's right? That's right. So Microdon is a modular design. and um, Everything clicks together like Lego. Um, so we made that very, very simple. The camera module is simple, a module which snaps on with magnets. Right. You simply hold it down like that, and then snap it on, and it connects immediately. It's also designed to go both ways. So you can have front facing, or you can have a rear facing. Oh, nice. So that means when you're flying, you can actually turn the drone around and take a drone selfie flying away from you. So this is the end of- A drony, the, as they're yeah, called. Yeah, dronies, yeah. The end of selfie sticks. Right. And now, I guess the other question is, you've got the camera, but something as lightweight as that, it needs to be reasonably stable, otherwise the images are kind of next to useless. So the question is how stable is the footage, especially if it's windy? So this is, um, the, for the 3.0, we really worked on the stability to make it very, very smooth. Uh, so you get a very, very good quality video. Obviously it's not like a GoPro or that, or, or that kind of quality video, but it's a very high quality video, which is equivalent to something of your smartphone. All right, so let's see this thing in action. Um, let's sure. just take it for a, a test spin here. So explain what you're doing then. So there's a couple of controls. You've got your iPhone there, and you've also got a dedicated controller. And it's, is it either or? Do you need the big, hefty controller, or can you simply use the iPhone? So it's actually dual control. So you can fly with multiple devices. Either okay. with your smartphone, you can fly that for convenience and, and you know, playing about with. Or you okay, can fly with just your smartphone. smartphone? Yes, just your smartphone on its own. And that's just a Wi-Fi direct connection straight to the, to the drone? Correct, yes. Uh, okay. Um, we're using a special 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. That gives you long range, but also um, low latency. So that, it, unlike traditional Wi-Fi, this gives you a much better um, experience, enables you to have live streaming video to your smartphone. Why wouldn't you use 5 gig Wi-Fi? There's a lot of interference at 2.4, isn't uh, yeah, there? Yeah, we could have done uh, 5.8, but um, at the time, um, we, we'd chosen 2.4 gigahertz as a, as a safe option. We found okay. it worked pretty well. So let's take this thing for a quick spin here. Let's, um, so you're going to use the controller here now. Yeah. Now, we did actually take it for a spin just before we sat on stage, and we tried to use the Wi-Fi connection between the drone and the phone. And of course, being CES with hundreds of Wi-Fi networks, it was a little unstable. So we've recorded. It does record directly onto a micro SD card exactly. on the drone itself, yeah. right? So that's where you're going to see the footage pre-recorded from literally three or four minutes ago that we're going to show. So yeah. we're also going to take this, though, for a spin. So you're going to actually fly this in the air. So just take us yeah. through what so, you're going to do. Um, so this is the handset. So obviously, you know, right now at CES, there's so much interference with Wi-Fi. Having a dual control system means you can just get this great controller and just fly even in, in high interference with, a, with traditional radio. So here we go. Just power it up, and you're flying. As you'll, as you'll see, it's very, very stable. Um, traditionally, with the 2.0 or even the 1.0, you'd never get this amount of stability. But we've been working on the flight controller so that when you're flying, you get a very high precision control. Yeah, You've and that seems pretty fast as well. How fast can it go? Um, this can go 45 miles an hour. Wow. For beginners, we've got a very easy way to use it, using the slow mode. 
So right now, I'm in the slow mode, which is the easiest way to fly. And then you simply move this on the left to a fast mode, and then to the third setting, insane mode. And when you're in insane mode, that's really for expert pilots. So let do me we, show you do we try works. insane mode in here, or, or would we be insane? So it doesn't refer to us being insane. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Yeah, I can feel it's, it's kind of blow drying my hair here a little bit. So people wanted, um, when we were designing the, the micro drone 3.0, some first timers wanted a drone which was very easy to use. But our expert pilots wanted a drone which was um, really free flying, so they right. could fly really fast and do acrobatics, FPV racing. And um, so we've made that all into one device. And that was really hard to do, but um, now. That is the challenge, it. isn't it? D designing a drone one means probably no one's happy. But you've got some very cool features on this particular one, uh, which I think you first showcased a year ago the inverted flying. Can you showcase that for us? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, <laughs> How much does it hurt when it actually hits you? That's the other question. Um, it's like getting flicked by a rubber band. It doesn't really hurt. Right, OK. That's the main thing about microdrone, because you can get this sort of 250 size quadcopters with brushless motors. And um, that would have been an easy thing for us to do, because yeah. we could have just said, right, well, don't worry about the kind of refining of the weight. We can just use these motors to pump the power. But um, that makes it you know, not really safe for indoor use. So microdrone uses these um, 8 millimeter motors which are powerful enough to lift up to 90 grams. And with 90 grams, we're able to create a tiny chip um, for the Wi-Fi module, and as well as having the prop guards, um, the modular motor arms, and um, the modules to carry on. Now, the other big compromise I guess you may have had to make, which is one of the biggest issues facing drone makers, is battery life. That's right. Right? So it's so something so small, so like you need to keep it light, but you need to obviously keep it in the air. Mm. What's the battery life like? Um, so you get about eight minutes flight time, which is pretty standard. Um, so the main thing we've overcome with this is the design of it. We've made it simple. Um, most drones this size have lossy connectors, which are just wires you put together. And that's pretty barbaric, in my thought, because most people pull them and they solder them, have to solder them together and they break. Um, that's really not good for customers. So um, we've made this battery, which is like a cartridge. You simply slide it in, just like that, and then it's ready to go. You can just swap out the batteries in seconds. That's really convenient for um, people who want to fly it for longer periods. Right, but you would need a supply of them. So I guess that brings on another question here, which is how much does this cost? It's a small, easy to use, lightweight drone aimed at beginners and professionals alike. How much are we looking at for this? Um, so it's $200 for the drone, the camera, and the handset, and everything you need to go. OK, which is actually a fraction of the price of, obviously, the bigger drones with the you know, exactly. the bigger cameras yeah. and, and better it batteries. Of, it has all these features which kind of gives people a taste of what you get on a bigger system in a small size device. So I've got the inverted flying now, so I'll oh, okay. show you how it flies upside down. All right. This is a really cool feature. If you, if you were flying away somewhere and you land upside down, you can actually take off again from the inverted position and then flip in midair. So let me see if this works. Here we go. Wow. Check that out. That's a very cool uh, aerobatic stunt. Look at that. There we go. Now, some of the more advanced drones, the more expensive ones, have all sorts of built-in features to make sure it doesn't ha suffer from flyaways, where it just kind of loses its orientation. What happens if you're flying it and it's four, five hundred feet away uh, and suddenly it just loses power? Is that an issue or is that something you've solved? Um, this is... Um, oh, he's going to come over and help you. Hang on a sec. And the other question is, of course, how high can it actually go, and how far away can it go, especially if you're controlling it with your smartphone? OK, so um, is that working? Oh. Testing. Microphone testing. Is here. OK, so um, we could have gone for a GPS module to have a return home, but um, that would have added a lot to the, a lot to the cost. Yeah. So we actually stripped that out and then um, to keep it under $200. But we added a, a fail-safe um, we're calling return home, which is a programmed return home which basically means when you're flying away, no matter which way the drone is heading, just hold down that button and it will return on that straight line. So it kind of reverse engineers, it reverse engineers the direction you've been and knows the waypoints exactly. and just finds its way back. Yeah. I can show you how that works. Okay. So fly down here and we'll just turn the drone so it's any direction. Yeah. And then just hold the button down. There we go. And you've got the two blue lights and the two white lights indicating which direction it's facing. Exactly. But is it fairly straightforward to fly? Because I know, again, a lot of advances from other companies in terms of just making sure that 
it's not flying in a direction which you don't expect it to because its front is this way and you push this way and it's suddenly very confusing for you. Yeah, so nose in, that's called nose in. And that's one of the hardest things to learn for overcoming the, the kind of learning how to fly drones. So we've created a thing called smart orientation, which basically um, learns the heading of the drone so that no matter when you're flying forward or backwards, no matter where the drone is facing forward, backwards, left, right, you turn left and right, it will always go in so that direction. So it goes in the direction you're actually expecting exactly. it to go. So just to show you how that works, yeah. what went start my orientation, I'm just going to start turning to the left and right, and I'm going to start turning it. So it always sticks on that fixed path. Yeah, that looks this great. great for novices or beginners just to overcome that difficulty of learning. Now, there's no gimbal on this drone, which would automatically stabilize it a lot more. I guess that's to keep the cost down, right? There is. In fact, there we've, is. we've launched the world's smallest gimbal for micro drone. Um, it weighs only 15 grams, and it snaps on with magnets. So that's launching later in the year. So and I guess um, you can get away with a lighter gimbal because the drone itself is lighter. Exactly. That's right. the, the smallest gimbal in the world, and basically allows you to fly up to um, the maximum distance, but then turn the camera 90 degrees so you can get a panoramic shot with the video. And you can buy this from where? Um, so we actually launched this on Indiegogo, the crowdfunding website. And um, we launched it earlier in the year, and it, the response has been staggering. Um, we initially wanted to raise 75000 for the basic production. Um, but we $75, smashed $75,000? Dollars, yes. Yeah. And um, we smashed that in the first six hours of the campaign. Um, as of yesterday, it's raised $3 million, which wow. has been incredible. Wow, $3 million on Indiegogo. Very impressive. Well, clearly, there seems to be a market for this. But one issue that people have with drones, I, I read some statistics somewhere where people buy drones, they use them for a few hours, they go, yeah, that was kind of fun. They might take them out again, then they just kind of stick them in the drawer and forget about them. Is that, is that something that kind of worries you? Well, that was actually, we tried to solve that by creating a, a drone which continuously evolves. So with the modular design, you've got the magnetic connection, and we're continuously developing all the new accessories for the drone. So today, we actually announced the, the launch of the range extender which gives you long-range, low-latency video to your smartphone. And that's a revolution for FPV flying. Um, FPV? Yeah. First person? First person view. Okay. It's basically where you see the video from the drone's perspective on the ground. Um, so we've come up with a really innovative solution using Google Cardboard and the smartphone. Um, basically, you, pop it, um, you launch the accompanying app. That's, um, that's, that's the what interface. You yep. um, put it into 3D mode, and then it splits the video into 3D. And then you simply put it into your Google Cardboard like this, which is really cool. This is made by Dodo Case. We worked carefully with, these, with, these, um, with Dodo Case to make a really ergonomic and, and comfortable FPV headset. Um, and then, then you see it live and um, fly first person view. And with the range extender, you can get up to 500 feet live streaming video. Yeah, so I'm seeing a, a hugely magnified iPhone screen here that looks much bigger, of course, and much better than it would just simply by having it. Um, mm. Uh, in my hand. All right, Vernon, well, great stuff. Thank you very much indeed. That's great. the Microdrone 3.0. Stay with us here at the Stuff Stage at CES. Plenty more time, including a camera with no less than 16 lenses, if you can believe that. Stay with us.